Today we are at Rotaval in Chippenham, a company that's been established 52 years and we're going to learn about how they manufacture these rotary valve bodies and rotors. Now, Adrian, thank you very much for having us in at this fantastic facility. I'm looking forward to learn all about the manufacturing of these valves. But firstly, before we start and take a look at some of the manufacturing processes, can you give us a, a brief overview of, of what you do at this company and, and talk us through some of the products? Thanks, Gio. Um, yes, as you just said, the, the fact the, the facility was founded 52 years ago. It was bought around about just over 20 years ago by the Gerica Group, which is a four generation family owned business in Switzerland. They manufacture um, equipment for the food industry, um, which is used all over the world. And this was a key, art, a key part of their process that they wanted to bring in house. The business itself uh, manufactures rotary valves. As you've said already, we also manufacture diverter valves as well for the industry. Um, this is a, a fairly typical valve for us. It's one of our modular range. Um, it's a, a 350 millimeter size valve. Um, this is a non-cleanable valve, but we also make a range of, as we move through the factory, you'll see a range of very high spec, fast clean rotary valves. Right, so Adrian, we are at the manual cell at the minute, where we can see some of the manual machines um, cutting the, the, or boring out some of the large bores. Can you talk us through um, this particular section? If we could walk through, please, Adrian. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is the very traditional part of, of, of rotor valve. Um, these machines in place have been in place for a, a long time. Um, they're key parts of our process. This is where the process really starts for us, where we take castings and then we machine the castings to uh, a very accurate bore size and uh, the flange faces, etc., ready for uh, ready for the assembly of the valve. Um, these machines are old. They're very capable. They're very good machines, but part of uh, what we want to show you today is how we've advanced the company. Yeah, and we'll look at that. Is that, is, is that one of the, the, the largest valves that you would, would manufacture on site, Adrian? That is the largest valve we manu manufacture on site on a regular basis. Yeah, now, now a... you've, you've got some big USPs in regards to the manufacturing of these valves, and I believe there's a, there's a one mil taper bore that goes through the valve. How important is that? And how did you used to uh, manufacture that tapered bore in the past? The, the one millimetre taper bore and matching rotor is, uh, is really unique to our business. Um, it's something that allows us to extract the rotor causing with no contact to the bore, which is very important in the food industry. Now, traditionally, that was manufactured on the Webster and Bennett machine, you can see behind you. If, if we can take a walk over to it, please, Adrian. I don't know if we can squeeze, squeeze past here, um, but this is one of the old Webster and Bennett machines. Is this still being used? This machine is used on a daily basis. Um, traditionally, that taper would have been machined on this machine. It's a very time-consuming process to machine that taper. Uh, and machine the bores on the Webster and Bennett. Um, but the taper is uh, very difficult to set on these. Right, so let's have a look at, at how the company's evolved. It, it's safe to say that these machines are still being utilised and still used, but you've introduced some new manufacturing processes um, at Rotorval. And um, obviously every company needs to evolve. What were your main um, objectives when when kind of evolving the manufacturing process or looking at new ways of saving time and operations? Well, one of the key th things for me when I, when I joined the business, Gio, was um, our lead times were way too long for an industry standard. Um, our deliveries were, were on-time delivery was poor. So I looked around us to see what we could do to try to, try to modernise the manufacture, shall we say. One of the pieces uh, of... We've got some CNC machines in here yeah. now that we can start seeing some, some processes here. Right? So you can see some of, the, some of the CNCs that we purchased in the last few years, um, quite in advance um, to what we've used on before. This is a brand new Doosan. This is less than, uh, less than a couple of months old. It was delivered in March. 
Um, so it's a very impressive piece of equipment. It really helps us, gives us, a, gives us a capability that we didn't have in the business before. It's fully probed, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a massive step forward in our technology. So effectively some of the manual work that, that was relied on in the past is, is being moved on to the CNC machines. Now. Absolutely, I mean, and that's, uh, that's definitely the way to go. And not, some not, of the stuff will always stay on the manuals. The very big valve you saw just now will always be on, on the manual machine as far as we can see. But the, the, the main advantages of bringing this work onto the CNC machines, is it, is it achieving a stable process? Is that the main advantage or is it also the time saving and, and the operational savings as well? Uh, there's operational savings obviously with modern equipment like probing etc. That makes set up the parts much, much quicker. Um, they're new machines, they just perform better. The other thing is of course, is uh, skilled labour on manual machines is, is more and more difficult to find now. So as we, as we move forward, as we grow the business, as our throughput becomes more, um, we need to speed things up. We're, the next step to this, we're looking more at offline programming, so we'll program in the office for the guy to use. It's always a balance between trying to find the, the right skills and, and the right equipment. And I'm really um, fascinated by looking at this fixture here, Adrian. Um, can you tell me what's going on on this particular machine? I know that you've got the guy currently loading, loading the, the valve. So this is a, that's a new tool that you can see there, and this has been purchased from SMW. We've been working very closely with them. We described earlier on the tapered bore and the machine and the casting. One of the things I could see very early on when I came to the business was that this machine, lovely machine, Doosan Puma 600, um, a big machine for this business was 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 underutilized. Yeah, I could also see the potential for the capability for moving body manufacture from our traditional machines onto CNC manufacture, particularly with that one millimeter valve. It's a simple program. Right and now, I, I, Adrian, let's go back to this fixture. Then, it, 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 tell me about you know what what you're actually doing to the valve on this machine and what operations it's saved you know what were your problems before how have you utilized it if we look at this uh, the body on the floor this will probably give you an idea of what we were trying to do um, so the first operation is to skim this flange from a casting we then flip it over and we skim the bottom flange as well once those flanges are skimmed we can then put it into this tool here so you can see the, the, the flanges are skimmed and this tool, a very complex tool that uh, the SMW put together for us. No, well, I'm going to go and talk to Tom now, Adrian. Thanks for your time about, about this application and, and, and how they come up with this solution. Um, Tom, good to see you today. I did, um, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating fixture that, that Adrian's just been describing. Yes. But, but what problems were you presented with when designing and manufacturing this uh, solution? Um, from, from a problem perspective, uh, the first thing you have to overcome is feasibility uh, because obviously you're turning something of that size on a lathe. So the first thing you need to do is take into account health and safety, feasibility, will it spin, will it fit in the envelope of the machine. There's a lot, like a checklist of things you've got to come across before you can even get to the design process. Uh, so we, we obviously encountered all that, uh, crossed everything off one by one got to a situation where we were happy to take on the project for a startup uh, and then that led us to obviously coming up with the op 30 fixtures you see today well, can you can you explain it to me uh, and, and start from the beginning please Tom I can see the zero point pull studs at the back yes. I can see the zero point fixture yes can you can you actually tell us what it, what you're actually doing on the machine from one operation to another please um, well as you can see on the machine right now they're just setting up for um, OP10 and OP20 machining, which uh, before we can go into the OP30 fixture itself, you have to uh, pre prepare the flange. So you'll do the OP1 turning on soft jaws, on the hard jaws, sorry, and then I'll turn it around OP20 and do the hard hard turning, on, hold it onto the soft jaws as well. So you do that and then you move over to here. So that gets taken off, everything gets everything taken gets off? Everything gets taken off. Essentially, you take the chuck off and you replace it with the uh, zero point receiver plate. So this is, this is something very unique, you never ever or very rarely see a zero point fixture place on, plate on the spindle nose of a CNC lathe. No you don't, no, no, it's something very rare, 
uh, but as we've proved, it's also achievable. Well, we're going to see this on the machine shortly, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. So then effectively then, this, this big, large fixture gets zero pointed onto the machine. So you've got maximum repeatability and stability. Yes, you have, yes. So essentially you put your zero point receiver plate on, this will mount to that uh, via airline actuation. So airline on, clamp, airline off, unclamp. And then essentially this is a cage that holds the fixture, sits on V-blocks, touch pads to locate. And then the, um, the top of the base, it's the top of the fixture itself actually acts as your downward force. So that will be a clamp that sits on top of the fixture, push down on the component, and then that allows them to uh, face the flange and the, do the central bore so that it's in um, alignment with each other. So everything's concentric. Now I know Adrian mentioned that one millimetre uh, tapered bore that runs through the machine and, and, and by manufacturing them manually sometimes you weren't getting that consistency or it was very yes. time so it was a very time consuming operation but now you know you're getting that consistency it's saving a lot of time i believe it's saving up to 10 hours per valve yes. um this has transformed the way in which they manufacture the valves here at rotor valve it um, has without a shadow of doubt you know you're doing all three processes on, on one machine uh, uh, keeping that in one place it's helped them no end and continue to help them as well we